This is a picture of uh, the person I mentioned so many times, namely Lou Zickman, Uncle Lova, who um, cut a good figure and would also cut a good figure in company, in conversation. By that time he was already married to Poyla. Let me go back. He divorced his Russian wife Barbara, Barbara, and married uh, my aunt on my father's side, Polya, in 1927. The wedding was, of course, in Herbien, and that wedding is etched in my mind, I think, as strongly as any event uh, in the 1920s. I remember it very clearly. It was a Jewish wedding with the chopa and the stomping on the glass and all that. And that was the beginning of a very long marriage, lasting until 1973 when Uncle Lova died uh, in the age of uh, 88. Because he was born in 1885 and died in 1973. And this may have been taken, say, in the earlier 30s, uh, mid 30s. He celebrated his 50th birthday, something also that is clear, in my mind, in 1936. So he was, I would say, middle of, or even uh, somewhat later 40s. Mm -hmm. And he had a certain style, a, a, a certain character. What he, was that style and character? Can you well, he, he was a style of dignity. He also, indeed, spoke Russian very well with very limited education at high school. I think he's the most he ever had, if that much. And wrote Russian very well. The, the Zickman family, his parents' family, was more Russified than my father's family. When Russian was a lot more spoken there than my father's. My father's family, I doubt that any Russian was spoken mm -hmm. at home. Well, he cut a good figure. He, he was a man of action, of uh, decision, of resolve. Uh, he uh, amassed a very large fortune by by her bin standards, not by New York standards, but by her bin standards. A fortune that uh, he probably, on several occasions, at least partly lost because of the vagaries of, of the economy, and then most of it he lost uh, as a result of the Second World War. But I'll come to that later on. He lived in a fine style, they had one of the finest apartments in town. They had a living room, very few people had living rooms, and a very fancy living room, a very fancy building, uh, sort of uh, the uh, uh, second floor of a two-floor semi-Moorish style residential house in the location. He um, collected things, he had a collection of some fine books, he collected some uh, fine objects there. I remember a magnificent statue of Peter the Great on the horse, a famous bronze horseman, reproduced bronze horseman in St. Petersburg, which was a statue put up by Catherine the Great in the second half of the 18th century. But reproduced, of course, on a small scale, stood on one of his tables, uh, reproduced beautifully with the large granite base, the real statue in the reproduction being a beautiful piece of green malachite and uh, a reproduction of Peter the Great on his horse and so on. Now you see these things were actually obtainable in her bin and indeed the story was that that particular piece once belonged to someone in the Russian royal family. They were obtainable because refugees arrived with such valuables as they could and then sold them off in order mm -hmm. to live. And so they were around in jewelry stores and antique stores and so on, the one could buy. Mm -hmm. and, and he did that. He had some very nice pieces of sculpture, some by Japanese sculptors. And so. But uh, he was a Tsikman, and a Tsikman means that he was somewhat temperamental. My mother was a Tsikman, she was temperamental. The Tsikmans were very different from the Gross, so the Gross were very least those I ever knew, <laughs> were always placid, mm -hmm. calm, reasonable, sweet, delightful, and so on and so forth. <laughs> like Professor Doolittle. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the sequence tend to be temperamental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they tend to fly off the handle, too. Fly off the handle. Fly off the handle. My mother used to do that. And, and so uh, Luzikman did the same. 
<laughs> yeah, he, he would do that too. Mm -hmm. And there was a period when my mother and he and his wife, Polya, were on rather poor terms mm -hmm. because of something one or the other said and, and so on <laughs> and so forth. He, um, he was a very generous person. He uh, um, shared his wealth with uh, just about all the um, charitable causes that there were, and not only Jewish charitable causes, but also non-Jewish charitable causes. Um, but uh, obviously the demand uh, tended to be even greater than his supply of money, and he couldn't satisfy everybody. Did you have much of a, a personal uh, relationship with, with him as a young kid. Uh, did he take the time uh, yes. to have a, a relationship with you as a child? And, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. We saw each other quite a bit. Most of the socializing was within this group of three families. Um, I don't have to repeat them again. At least the socializing that I was involved in. Uh, my parents, of course, used to go out and see other people, but I would not be involved in because I was young. Uh, and uh, and I remember he he always took a great interest in uh, Misha and me and, and uh, Lucia. Uh, he I remember cases where he sat down and played checkers with us and uh, and he used to love to kid us. He used to love to kid us. And uh, was he was he a relaxed man? I mean, the way you he described could be him, relaxed. he could be he could be very relaxed. Mm -hmm. He, uh, I remember one occasion after a, a strong shower at one of the resorts we went to, when he called me over to where he was uh, standing, and I uh, came over, and then he shook the tree so that a huge <laughs> shower of water fell oh, both on him and on me. That was his joke, you see. <laughs> but nobody was mad at him. <laughs> and he didn't do it. And, and he didn't do it because he thought he could get away because he was, in a sense, the most important person in the family. He was just playful. Boy. He was just playful. Yeah, he was <laughs> playful. Well, he got wet too. Yeah, yeah. he got wet too, right? <laughs> he was very playful. He was not the kind that would not notice uh, the the kids uh, in his, uh, uh, you know, in his uh, immediate uh, surrounding. He would always notice kids and always say something funny or kid them or tease them or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did he interest himself actively in your education, yours and Misha's? Uh, I think uh, indirectly. Uh -huh. Indirectly, uh, in the sense I think that he encouraged uh, our parents, and maybe even more encouraged, uh, but I don't know that definitely, to, to send us to Tianjin, mm -hmm. to send us to, uh, to America, to Berkeley, and so on. And did he, uh, do you know whether he contributed to the cost of these things, which were probably uh, well, quite Well, that's high. what I, uh, I just meant when I said uh, uh, whether directly, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I'm not sure. He uh, didn't. He never had children of his own. No, he never had children of his own. No. Mm -hmm. And this is perhaps also a good uh, time for me to say something, say something about Paula. As I remember her from her days, you see, my main memories of her being there, of course, for the period from approximately 1930, 32 to 1936, when I left for Tianjin. I remember in this fashion, Paula uh, was a grossman, a sweet person. <laughs> <laughs> Paula was a grossman, came, as I mentioned, from an extremely poor background, with very limited form of education, extremely poor. But she had not only the character and temperament and disposition, the sweetness that I uh, attributed to her, but she also had the resolve to make something of herself. And uh, when she married uh, Uncle Lyoba, that gave her the chance because he had the money. But she did not become one of those nouveau riches that threw money around left and right uh, and, and uh, put, uh, you know, uh, boulders of diamonds on, on their uh, hands and on their arms and whatnot. Quite the, Quite apart from that, quite quite uh, far from that, she was basically uh, creating a persona, a figure that was dignified, uh, attentive, uh, warm, and interested, 
and uh, a person of good bearing and good, uh, good manners. Well, these are uh, Lova and Pola at some summer resort place, I would guess. Here she is in a group of ladies, including my mother here. Now this lady was uh, what it was known by the French phrase Dame de Compagnie, a companion lady. Uh, she uh, was of, uh, no, no, rather well-bred, well-brought up Russian origin. And uh, uh, actually she was paid to keep company for a while with Pole because Pole wanted to, uh, through her presence and through her company, to uh, absorb more of the more cultivated manners. Well, this is the lady that I refer to as the Dame de Compagnie, who kept uh, company with, uh, with Paula and uh, helped her sort of in, to introduce her into the social graces and uh, that uh, her own background deprived her of. She was a very attractive person. Very handsome. And she was very handsome, and she had a, a very fine bearing and a person of uh, great charm, urbanity, and uh, um, great appeal, despite the fact that she, of course, came from great poverty, from the dumps of the dumps in Russia, with very little education, but uh, she, she knew how to pull herself up. And also a person of very even character. She, would never blow up or anything, very sweet, very, but of course you remember her. Yeah, I do. She died in 1981 at the age of 84, or actually 83. She had Here again, uh, Love and Toilet, obviously. And they had a little, the one before. a little, what's that, a Pekingese? Yeah, a little Pekingese dog or something. Appropriate yeah. country for that, I guess. Yes, yes. And the beauty mark was uh, cosmetically applied? Yes, cosmetically. But this is definitely Pole here. This is uh, my mother. This obviously is uh, Grisha, Misha's father. This is my father. And this is, I think, myself. Mm -hmm.